coming to us from news.yahoo.com. Yahoo! Um, a federal lawsuit has been filed against the city of Wyoming, Michigan, the Wyoming police chief, and six of his police officers. The lawsuit says realtor Eric Brown and his client Roy Thorne suffered emotional distress after police showed up and handcuffed them at a house showing. Attorneys for Brown and Thorne are requesting trial by jury. Right after realizing the mix-up, Wyoming police removed the handcuffs and apologized. The department giving us context tonight about why they responded the way they did. But for the men put in cuffs, saying sorry doesn't change the past, as they want to be sure this doesn't happen again in the future. It was a Sunday afternoon showing that started like any other. Realtor Eric Brown was taking his client through the home on Sharon Avenue in Wyoming when he noticed a growing police presence in the neighborhood. I just thought, well, we're going to have to probably leave because they're maybe looking for um, a criminal. Eric Brown had been showing a home in Wyoming, Michigan to his client, Army veteran Roy Thorne, Army vet and Thorne's 15-year-old son, all of whom are black. In the middle of the showing, police surrounded the home and drew their guns, and all were ordered to come outside where they were handcuffed and placed into separate vehicles. Police told them someone had broken into the house weeks earlier, and that a neighbor had called to say it was happening again. At see something, say something, Karen. Alice Kravitz. Oh my God, there's black people in that house over there. I'm calling the cops. And Roy's son, uh, Sammy, came upstairs and said that there were a whole lot of police officers outside the home. And that's when Roy looked outside and noticed that there were officers there and, and they were um, pointing guns towards the property. Roy, the client, announced themselves to the officers. They say police then ordered them to exit the home in single file with their hands in the air. All three were put in handcuffs, including Roy's 15-year-old son. They keep the guns drawn on us until all of us were in cuffs. So. Um, that was a little, yeah, a little traumatizing, I guess. You know, under the current climate of things, you just really don't know what's going to happen. They said the neighbor thought she recognized the car as the same black Mercedes used by the person who originally broke in. There were no Mercedes. There was no Mercedes outside the home. Brown and Thorne had driven to the house in a Chevrolet and a Hyundai. Well, maybe it was the Chevy that kind of looked like a Mercedes. I don't know. Alice Kravitz. The three, on October 1st of this year, filed a federal lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Michigan. The lawsuit names the city of Wyoming, Michigan, the Wyoming police chief, and six police officers as defendants. Using excessive force and unlawful detainment, the six police officers violated their civil rights, the complaint says. The plaintiff's attorney has requested a trial by jury and is asking for full and fair com compensatory, compensatory damages. <laughs> I can't read. Say it again. The plaintiff's attorney has requested a trial by jury and is asking for full and fair compensatory damages in an amount to be determined by the members. The plaintiffs are also seeking punitive damages in an amount yet to be determined. It was only then the men say they had a chance to explain themselves. Eric showing police his credentials as a real estate agent showing the house, at which point they were free to go. That officer came back and apologized again, um, but at the same time, um, the damage is done. Wyoming police say they were responding to a report of a break-in and their actions followed protocol, telling us that same home was recently broken into and the 911 caller indicated the person arrested had returned. Even with that in mind, Eric and Roy can't help but feel that race was at the heart of it. Now the complaint reads the defendant's conduct as described herein was intentional and reckless and was also extreme and outrageous, which caused the plaintiffs to suffer harm in the form of severe emotional distress. The city of Wyoming did not immediately respond to insiders' request for comment, but declined to comment on the pending lawsuit when reached by CNN. So they didn't respond to insider, but they did respond to CNN and said, no, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this one is just... I mean, I want to judge the cops on this one because uh, 
they they just go out there. They they get this call from Alice Kravitz. And there's black people in the house next door. They're not supposed to be there. I think they were there a few weeks ago too. And they come rushing out, guns ready, arrest these guys, or detain these guys in handcuffs, throw them in the back of the car. You know, all over. Instead of just saying, "Hey, what are you guys doing here?" Hey, there's a question. What are y'all doing here? Did anybody think to ask that? Of course they didn't, because cops don't ask those types of questions. When cops get the call from dispatch, they go, oh, that's what's going on. Okay. I mean, look at SGV News. Um, I know a lot of people maybe don't watch him, but... Uh, one of his older videos, the cops came out and drew guns on him because somebody said, these guys are out here on our property with guns. And they're, you know, in front of our property with guns. And cops came out ready to shoot him. And it was because SGV News had a black taser on his hip. A taser, not a gun. I guess it is a gun, right? It's a taser gun. But my point is that these cops, they just read the call and they know what's going on. They go out there. They know what's going on. And if they get if they if they get it wrong, they say, "Well, dispatch gave us the call. Now blame dispatch." No, I'm blaming you for incompetency. Because you should have said, "What's going on, man?" That I would be lying to you if I said if I was just you, and you. If you guys were in that house, if you got walked up to that house, I don't think the neighbor would have called. And if she would have called, I don't believe that the officers would have reacted the same to you than they did to us. While the whole incident only lasted a few moments, Eric says it's made a lasting impact. Well, I feel pretty anxious about, you know, or nervous or maybe even a little bit scared about what do I do to protect myself then if I'm going to show a home. Um, any authorities just get called on a whim like that? Do do, uh, do I have to? Am I just automatically the, the the criminal? Because that's that's pretty much how we were treated in that situation. Wyoming police say they take these emergency calls seriously and respond based on training and department policy. Now, if the house had just been broken into a few weeks earlier, okay, I get if they come out with pepper spray and tasers at the ready. And I don't know, maybe guns, you know, you don't know who's in the house. But instead of grabbing these guys and throwing them down and handcuffing them and throwing them in the back of the car, they should have just said, what are you doing here? I'm showing the house to these guys. I'm a realtor. Oh, you want, can I see your realtor's license? Solved. But cops don't work that way. Cops read the dispatch call and go, got it. We got him. We got him. We got him this time. And when they get the wrong guy or it's the dispatch effed it up, they go, Sorry, it's what we were told. And I know I'm going to go here and people are going to get upset, but that's what the Nazis said, the Nazi soldiers. That's what I was told by the captain. I'm just following what I was told to do. Yeah, don't ask questions, just do it.